Welcome everyone to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. Today's Pick a Card reading is the front runner from a poll that I did on my first community tab about topics that you might like to see. So thank you so much to everybody who participated in that poll. If you didn't see it, I was asking about topics that are, I guess, almost part of the mission statement of what I want to do with this channel, and, and that's to do topics semi-regularly that really look at what makes you special and unique. I have a personal theory that we are all kind of regimented into boxes and categories and senses of how we compare with others from the way that education is constructed through to performance reviews at work, all of that kind of thing. And there is certainly some relevance to that sometimes in the acquisition of a skill or a qualification. Of course, there needs to be assessment and so forth, and it needs some objective criteria. But what often happens is that we get caught up in the views of others and we presume they're more objective because they're external to us, but they're really just the subjective view of somebody else more often than not. So I'm really trying to look at topics that remind you of how diverse your sort of skill base and your passions and your dreams and your abilities and your potential is so that you really have that confidence to go forward. So that was the sort of topics. So I listed a number of different topics and this one, what is your creative genius, was the front runner, which I was really pleased about, to be honest, because that's another part of the mission statement of this channel, which is to support creative people in whatever form creativity is in your life. And that doesn't have to be being a performer or a writer or a sculptor or something. You can be creative in so many different ways. And it's what makes the engine of progress and evolution of the human condition so vital. So it's very, very important. And, and I love that people were interested in that topic. But I will do all the topics because all of the topics got votes. So no, none will be left behind. What I will probably do is try and do this type of topic every couple of weeks so that it becomes a bit of a regular thing. So if you have other ideas about things that are about your individuality that you would like to see readings done on, please let me know in the comments in this or some other video so that I can be aware of that. I do try to respond to viewer requests. Uh, so that would be fantastic if you let me know that. I also, on the day that I did the poll, I'd actually recorded a set of readings about achieving mastery in a skill or a passion or a particular ambition. So that's sort of in this suite of sort of topics as well too. But because I'd already done that particular video, I didn't list it in the poll, but you will see that as part of the, the series. So hopefully this is going to be enjoyable for you. And as I say, if you have particular topics, do let me know. The other thing that I wanted to say just quickly um, for those who are regulars to this channel, I've been noticing lately, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen a bit, that I will get a notification on a comment and I, when I go to answer it, it seems to have disappeared and I can't, I can't respond to it and, and thank the person for commenting. And that's fine if you have put a comment up there and you've decided then you didn't want it there and you deleted it. I have no problem with that at all. But if anybody there out there thinks that I have deleted or ignored a comment, genuinely, I haven't done that. I'm trying not to do that. If somebody did something that was hate speech or <clears throat> defamatory, of course, that is not going to, to fly. But I think most of those tend to get picked up by YouTube anyway. But these are comments that look, you know, to be, you know, quite... Re well, more than reasonable, lovely comments, people sharing and so forth. So I just wanted you to know if, if you did think that had happened, that, that that's not deliberate at all. And by all means, go and put a comment again if you like, or don't let it dissuade you from commenting in the future, because I really love that community and that feedback. It's part of the pleasure of doing this. So I just wanted to let you know that because I've just been noticing it lately. It's not a lot. It's not a lot, but it does happen sort of every once in a while. So having done a couple of intro things like that, let's get into the point of this reading, which is why you're here, which is about what is your creative genius. So we're going to look at the sort of areas of the creative genius, your kind of creative profile, so to speak. And as I've done in other readings of this type, I'm going to probably focus more on the, the sort of larger world stage 
creativity as a career end of the analysis, but you can scale this to whatever level and whatever context your creativity is, because all of it's valid. You don't have to be on the world stage for that to be important. But by looking at the, almost the macro level, you can then work out what else that might be in your life and, and take the messages accordingly. So we'll look at that. We'll look at how that's manifesting, what are the kind of areas and techniques and so forth, particularly looking with Tarot there on the, the balance of minor and major arcana and the suits and so forth, and then how that's being received by your potential audience, whatever that is at the moment, a little bit about who the potential audience might be is if you really wanted to take this out into the world or the community in terms of demographics, and then just general advice from Spirit about how to really turbocharge your creative genius. So hopefully it'll be a detailed and interesting reading for you. As always, I'm going to ask you to tune in and choose which reading or readings, by all means, go to more than one if you feel drawn to more than one. But to tune in and see which ones you're intuitively drawn to or which one you're intuitively drawn to. To help with that, I'm going to be using different tarot and the tarot aspect of this particular reading for each pack. And that's represented here by the Empress card. I thought the Empress card is probably the top card in the major arcana to talk about creativity and the abundance and, and growth and everything that comes from, from really nourishing your creative genius. So this is the Empress from the Painted Tarot, this is the Empress from the Venetian Carnival Tarot, and this is the Empress from the Cute and Creepy Tarot. So you may be drawn to a particular tarot deck, you may be drawn to the colour or the picture, or you might be drawn to the chakra placement stones. So for pile one, we've got sacral chakra, pile two, solar plexus, and pile three, heart chakra. Any of those things may be a color or energy reference for you, or you may have a different way of choosing. Whatever way you do to choose one or more readings, the timestamps are in the description box below when you're ready, and I'll see you there. Welcome pile one to your reading. So these first cards were some of the cards, we'll look at some of the others near the end of the reading, that was under the Empress card that drew you to this reading. And as I've done quite often in these sorts of readings, I'm using these oracles as a bit of a snapshot of the energies around the topic of the reading. So this is to give me a bit of a sense about the spark, the, the, the underlying foundation, the psychological or creative spark of your creative genius. And this is, this is a very interesting set of cards. I think that you are someone who is not afraid of the shadow and is not afraid of what is intimate or maybe potentially hidden in some way. There is something about what you create in whatever form it is, which is about getting beneath the surface of things and taking the time and having the wisdom to take the time if necessary. Sophie Cowell, for instance, as an artist, is a performance artist who also collaborated with others. And a lot of what she looked at were the more intimate or private areas of life, really studying them to understand them in some way. So for some of you, with that and with the Duke of Shadows, which is taking the time and Athena with the wisdom, the, the clarity of mind and purpose to this, you, some of your creativity may be around studying human behavior in some way. And then that could be manifest in any number of ways, but it is about looking at what's underneath and being prepared to deal with the shadow and, and also being prepared to take the risk with the sort of passionate energy of fire around it and the performative energy of a dancer here. And then the George Michael sort of energy of having that exposed or seen. So it's like whatever you do creatively, there is a lot of you in it, but it's more than that. It's also a lot of what is the human condition in some way or another. And it's what's under the surface. And there's always a risk, I would think, when you have something like George Michael with these sort of cards, that you may be someone who finds some of your own private life or your own sort of beliefs or actions or whatever become part of the performance, become part of what people are fascinated by and all that sort of thing. But you definitely have the wisdom about putting that into context. So there's something in all this around what is really at the core of people and whether, as I say, it manifests in some incredibly new and creative therapeutic technique that helps people get to that, like a Freud or a Jung might have done, for instance or whether it is in something more performative. And some of you, it may well be with Dancer here, you may in fact express what you see in the human condition in some way, in a way that's a performance connected to music, again with George Michael, that's a possibility. 
So you could be a great songwriter, you could be a dancer, or, or maybe even a choreographer. It actually feels a little bit more like that potentially, because this feels like the foundation of something. It feels like you construct a way of looking at the world, a way of understanding people and so forth. And it's done in a very positive way, even though it goes to the shadow. It's passionate. It understands a little bit about some of the shadow around power and around the energy to express yourself and be out in the world and ambition and all those things that are associated with the divine masculine. That doesn't mean you have to be a man. It's, it's not about gender. This is about those sorts of energies. So there is something there around understanding potentially the will to the, to the I in the them, if that makes sense. It's like there's something about understanding the personal personal foundation and the personal passion and the personal expression underneath the surface in all of us and in you it's it's in this in the in the microcosm is a macrocosm and vice versa so there's something around that for you and as i say there's a, there's a kind of precision to it with athena and a wisdom to it i think your creativity people really benefit from it we have gratitude here i think that what you bring to the table whether it's in a performance whether it's in paintings that you do whether it's in something that you write there could be actually quite a few people who write here whether it's writing music or writing novels or stories or poetry or something like that but in whatever it is you get to the depths you're not afraid of the shadow and you're not afraid of the parts of us that we maybe hide but which if we brought them up to the light that would actually be a very healing thing so your creative genius is your extraordinary understanding of human nature of yourself and your capacity your strength and wisdom about how to use that and express it in a way that is positive and healing and helpful and also beautiful there's a beauty there's a beauty to say the music of george michael and the lyrics and so forth and also the beauty of a dancer so there's something beautiful in the way that you can take even the most tricky subjects and bring them out so you're meant to do that you're meant to express through your creativity in one form or another what's really going on so if for instance you were in a conventional organization and it's not you're not you're not in a creative profession you may be someone who within a team or even within the role you do really understands the dynamics of that organization and what's going on under the surface and finds a way to bring that up and, and have solutions that people can go with and can see as something to follow. So as I say, it doesn't have to be performative, but I do think that many, many people have come to this, there's something like that, something that you either perform or it's a bigger, bigger ticket thing where you, you bring in a new sort of, as I say, therapeutic technique, for instance, or a new approach and so forth, a breakthrough type of approach, shadow work approach, all of those sorts of things. You're, you're very, very creatively inspired in this area because of this wisdom that you have and your preparedness to go into the dark. So let's have a look with the tarot, with the painted tarot, about where this is in your life at the moment. And I'm going to be looking at a couple of things here. I'm going to firstly look at the narrative of the cards and then I'm going to look at the balance of the cards to see whether that tells me anything more about your particular creative skills and approach. You'll see what I mean by that as we go through it. Okay, so firstly, in terms of your creative genius at the moment, quite a bit of it comes from understanding or having experienced pain, potentially with the Ten of Cups and the Six of Cups both reversed from your childhood or in your family. It's very possible that some of your, your early understanding about the shadow and so forth has been from things that you've seen in, within your family or an extended family or even in the schoolyard, the early, early developmental stuff that made you wonder about whether or not true happiness is achievable. Now, I do think your ultimate outcome is towards finding a way to heal something, but I think that you're driven from some pain or some sort of issues that you had and possibly from a lack of stability. It's possible that, that many of the people who've come to this particular reading may have come from a broken home, for instance, or 
from a home where there was a sense of isolation or impermanence. Maybe you moved a lot or one or other of your parents was away a lot or something like that. There's, there is really a sense that you went into your mind and this is where the Athena energy is. And that's where you found a lot of your strength and you've actualized yourself. It's like you started to understand the dynamics of your family or your friendship circle or whatever this is and the pain and what was under the surface of it. And that allowed you to actualize yourself philosophically and also creatively in some way. You are, you have got to that point. So in who, whatever age you are now and whatever you've gone through and whatever you're doing creatively, you have a real sense of self. And that's why you can be the person who looks at what's under the surface. You can look at the shadow. You have that strength. The Queen of Wands in many decks has a black cat or some sort of dark feline character with it. And that's normally to remind, it's her reminding herself that there is always a shadow. So I think it, it again picks that up here. And you see that. And you're very individual. You're very clever in the way that you deal with things. And you, you will break through traditions. You will do what is unexpected. Like Sophie Cowell, you will do stuff that people might even find a little bit confronting at times. And and But that takes things forward for you. You're, you're prepared to have the debate. You're prepared to have the argument. And I feel like you are at that point now. It looks to me like the people who've come here, you have started to develop something. But it's from developing yourself and developing yourself through knowing that you have to rely ultimately on yourself rather than on other people. I think you're likely to be pretty much a solitary operator, at least at the moment. You may collaborate later. Or Sophie did collaborate with some of her her subjects basically but but I feel like for the most part you're more sort of someone who stands on their own again George Michael started in Wham but then his real career took off when he when he worked from his own basis and and primarily with his own writing and so forth so I do think that you are someone who is a little bit eccentric unique and braver than the average person and that's part of your creativity and not everybody can follow the path that you've gone on, to be frank, but everybody can benefit from it, pile one. Now, in terms of what I said about looking at the energy around this, what I would say is that there's no major arcana there. So I think it's still very much up to you at this point to how you want to manifest the Queen of Wands. It, for most of you, you probably haven't entered into contracts or things where external factors are really coming to bear, or it may be that you are ready to start looking for that but you have been looking very much internally before you look to the external if there were major arcana cards there i would think that we had some key external factors that right now are impacting but it does look to me like again you're such a stand in your own your own space such a lone wolf not necessarily antisocial or anything but sort of someone who is self-made rather than made by circumstances beyond what you've observed there's almost a sense of detachment about you that you can you can detach from what you've observed rather than let it create you you've created yourself so i think that that sort of firstly the lack of major arcana tells me that you are very much a self-made person the other thing that it's telling me is that you do have a balance of all of the different suits but there is there is a bit of a preponderance around cups that does suggest to me that there there's sorts of areas that you could be doing your creative expression are emotional areas, intimate areas and so forth. They and music and and poetry and writing, things that are more romantic, more it doesn't mean your work has to be romantic in a classic sense, but but it there's something in your creativity that has a very strong emotional base and very melodic that sort of thing. It's, it will touch the heart before anything. Even though there's a lot of intellectual precision behind it, you touch the heart first with people, you get to the core of them. And, and then there's something very precise, unique but precise. You will actually clash with tradition. If you were a painter, for instance, you would have amazing, amazing sort of hand and eye coordination, your precision, your perspective would be extremely good, but then you would clash, you would break that perspective in some way to get underneath it, to see what's underneath it. So, so, and if you were someone who was doing a theory, if your creativity, and I think some of you would be with this, it's a theory about human nature, you will very clearly get to the heart of it and then you will, will actually destroy preconceptions. You are bringing in the new, you are bringing in the different, and you will you will become 
I think quite iconic in that space potentially in whatever it is that you do it's because you're prepared to smash through traditions and do something new and do something different and you're not taking any prisoners with it with the Queen of Wands you're, you're very much going to be your own person and your your passion for this and that fire energy comes from yourself comes from who you are because it's the Queen of Wands there okay so let's ask for three more cards just to get a bit of a sense about what is your audience at the moment for this where are they placed because i do feel for many of you you may not have taken what you're doing out into the world particularly i mean you might have in some cases but but not not to the extent that the world is really impacting back so it'll just be interesting to see what the energy around your audience is for your creative genius part one Okay, so firstly, this, this confirms for me, I think, that you are still thinking about, you're considering where the best places are, the best ways to manifest this. You know, is it, you know, for some of you, it may be that you're in a conventional sort of role and you are using those sort of skills there, but you'd like to use them in a more creative way. I think many of you would like to use it in a sort of musical or, or poetic or even, even like painting or something like that sort of way as much as or performance are as much as being maybe in a conventional organization so i think you may be at this point juggling the sort of audiences that you could have and one is more traditionally uh, creative in the sense that we think of creative and one may be more material it does look like there's an offer coming to you and so and this is maybe why the queen of wands is is here because you know you could you could very well and it could be a good offer there's nothing to say that it isn't necessarily but i think that you have to determine with the king of coins reversed there what material control you'd have to give up for this particular offer so i think that's part of what's going on at the moment i think you do have an audience i think that people do see you at whatever level it is and it's really is just the beginning i think uh, because you have been doing so much work internally on who you are and you're really starting to manifest that but with the king of coins reversed it's possible that there's almost a a decision here between what would maybe make you more money and what would actually make you feel more self-actualized so there's there's something in that i think that there are different sorts of audiences and some may be more traditional and may potentially give a contract or take it forward you've got to determine is that the audience that you want so given that let's ask a couple of oracles about what your natural audience demographic is so this is a bit similar to something that i did around star quality where i looked at you know really some some characteristics to see who might be your audience and so forth so you may know people that fit this depending upon what level this is and that's fine but it's really meant more to be around demographics because it might help you determine what is your your right audience because that looks like that's one of the things you're trying to sort out at the moment so let's ask spirit for some information about the demographics of your best audience for your creative genius okay so firstly we've got a couple of chinese astrology which i'll go to first uh, I have actually done a little bit of research around this just to get a better sense about what the different uh, Chinese astrology signs mean rather than just sort of saying going and look it up. It's a very complicated thing. Chinese astrology is just as complicated as Western astrology. So, so when we talk about the, the years, that's a bit like talking about the sun sign. It's, it is a lot more complicated than that. But the dog, in general terms, is a very loyal sort of and helpful and honest and trustworthy sort of sign it tends to be unselfish but it tends to be a bit pessimistic and anxious so i do think that part of this gratitude energy coming to you is around people who feel like you are giving them a inspiration or an idea or an approach or even just a kind of sense of recognition so if you are doing a therapeutic for instance then i think there are people who will find that will help that and they're likely to be very helpful and trustworthy and loyal because you what you what you bring to the table is so different and it works and they will tell other people that it works so so that energy is around it and then tiger 
is at the other end of the scale. See, they're the confident, brave, magnetic sort of people. They're very idealistic. So they will like the sense that you are prepared to look into the shadow. You're prepared to be honest. But they also like a bit of fun, a bit of fire, a bit of thrill seeking and so forth. And the thing to watch with tigers is that they can be a bit arrogant as well and or, or very confident. So they're interestingly enough, the, the, the dog part of your audience is the one that's probably first going to understand the depths of what you're doing because they'll go straight to the depths as well with you. The tiger is probably the one that will get there eventually, but they're going to be drawn in by what is quirky and different and new about what you do. So it's almost like the two ends of the scale. We have fire energy, which we also have in what is natural. So people who have very fiery energy, people who, have, who are strong fire signs, so Sagittarius, uh, Leo and Aries are likely to be drawn to you, drawn to what you do. If it's somebody that you know around already, they may have pointy features, animated gestures, unruly hair, flushed skin. But I think by and large, we're just talking about people who respond to that, that sort of passion beneath what you do. And certainly if what you do is more in that kind of intimate love, human relationships end of things and it's performative in some way then then you're really going to draw people who see the passion in what you do and the earthiness in what you do with Taurus there again I feel like the Taurus and the dog feel a little bit similar here the humble practical focused patient people you are going to get a following for whatever you do that is very loyal to what you do and that sees material almost healthy outcomes there is something healthy about your genius actually there is something healing about your genius so that's definitely shows there and i think it also shows with the brown with the warmth and the natural sort of colors and and the friendly sort of sense and so forth so so i definitely feel that a large part of your audience for your creativity will be incredibly loyal and will see the incredible benefits of what you do and as i say it's that you don't have to be in therapeutics if you just write music that just touches the heart makes people feel better and, and have an awakening or poetry or you write novels that, that that give aspiration to people and make them understand themselves and be happy to look in the mirror or whether in an organization you're really creative around how you know the culture of the organization is because you really see what's going on under the surface and what the power issues are around it in all these spaces you're going to get a very loyal following you'll also get some people who are really drawn to the fire and the, the energy around it so let's get a little bit more demographic information for you Okay, interesting. So we've got dark complexion and it's interesting. We also had the melanin in brown as well too. So, so I th suspect that, you know, that may mean that you, that you draw in people from a diverse sort of backgrounds in terms of a sort of race, in terms of ethnic background and so forth. Certainly would appeal to people who, who are coming from those sorts of cultures. <clears throat> And there may be sort of something in understanding the power dynamics and, and supporting people from those cultures against sort of other cultures that have maybe been more dominant in the past. And it's interesting that we have politics there too. So some of you may express all of this through politics. This might be why we have the divine masculine there, it might be the shadow, the wisdom that is needed and the understanding of human dynamics. So some, some may be that, or it may be people who are from the political areas that are about diversity and inclusion that are very drawn to what you do because it is so affirmative ultimately to people. Whatever, whatever way you express it, it's very affirmative to people and affirmative to, to the more spiritual side and, and to really helping young people have a place in the world and see who they are and be comfortable with who they are in some way because we've got 20s here so you're likely to draw in a lot of young people and people who really want to understand and, and self-actualize in some way the spiritual side of it there may be something very spiritual in what you do with this as well so again i think that's about being able to you would be in the shadow work the healing work if you work in spiritual sort of areas and draw people in that way so very interesting very interesting sort of creative genius here and and a number of different ways that you can you can actually manifest it it's you're like you're like the born iconoclast let's ask for a little bit of timing or energy around this and then we're going to close out with the the 
cards of advice that were also under the, the Empress card when you chose to come to this deck. So some timing around your creative genius. Okay, so on a special occasion, so, so there may be something about particular times in the year, birthdays, um, if you're in an organisation, particular times when sort of reviews are done or, or sort of profits are looked at or whatever, or around politics when you could be elected. I mean, some of you may take this creativity to, to the political stage. You might do that and you may, you may get quite a strong following that way. But certainly there are, there's something around special occasions that are going to, to sort of give you opportunities around your creative genius. There's no rush. This is why I felt at the beginning that you, you have been working on and done such a great job on working on understanding yourself and other people. It's like this is just going to naturally evolve because what you are bringing is so different and, and just the expression of it in its various ways. And, and there are various ways that you can do it, both in the sort of like community political stage and then in a sort of therapeutic healing stage and then also in the performance stage. It could be any of those things where your creativity or a combination. You may be a bit of a renaissance person. So it's not telling us next year or in two months. It's saying, you know, it, there is something about special occasions, but there, you don't need to hurry. This is going to naturally evolve. So let's look at the other cards that were under the this, uh, crystal not crystal, under the Empress card that brought you here. So firstly, a card from the Visionary Oracle about energies around you at the moment. And we have trust. You see, this is the thing. People are going to trust you. You are going to be able to trust the people who follow you. As I say, they're going to be loyal. But people are going to trust you because you are honest. Like part of your creative genius is that you are just so honest. You're not going to sugarcoat things, but equally you're going to put it in a way that makes people feel included. So a large chunk of your creative genius comes from the incredibly beneficial and generous nature underneath everything and you're just going to engender trust in others and you can also trust that this is going to happen that you don't need to be too concerned about that let's put down some other energy levels for you okay so from the foxfire oracle we have hope so yeah, you're giving hope look there is something I actually think you're incredibly important. What you are going to do is incredibly important because you're prepared to go into what is really going on with people, what is really going on with the environment that we're in, what's really going on politically, whatever it might be, what it really is going on emotionally. And because you've been through difficulty, you've been through the refining, refining fire of emotional pain and come out of it and come out as that queen of wands, you can bring hope to others. And part of your creative genius is about re-inspiring hope in the oddest and strangest of ways. Like it's not, you are certainly not someone who's going to do a Hallmark card, for instance. It's not that kind of energy of, you know, here's the, the, the nice sort of Christmas card we get, for instance. You know, nothing wrong with that, not, not putting any shade on it. But that's sort of like the more traditional. There is something very new and different about what you do. And, and as I say, at the depths, and that actually reawakens hope from other people. It will make you well off with prosperity, riches and wealth, with gold there. And it's again because that colouring is around the solar plexus. It's because you've self-actualised first. It means that you can manifest a lot through this. Whatever you do is likely to make you very wealthy. And some of it comes from a kind of clairvoyance that you have with the pink card, clairvoyance, foresight and prophecy. The reason I think that you have the clairvoyant ability, and this might be picking up some of the spiritual stuff, is that you do really understand the patterns that you've seen. I remember listening to a high magician talking about prophecy and saying that prophets aren't necessarily so much people who see the future as understand the past. So your understanding of the past gives you a very acute eye for what's happening in the future and how to help people. And that's where you come from. So... Let's close out with the last card that was under the Empress card. And this is from the Creative Soul Mandala Oracle. And so it's just a kind of energy around your creative genius at the moment, part one. And we have mind, which I think goes back to Athena. Most of you, there is something, as I say, very precise. There is something very theoretic around what you do. And there is something iconoclastic in that. But you, there is a theory underneath this. In whatever form you, you bring your creativity, there is a theory and a precision and a very, very deep understanding. You have a very unusual mind. And that is incredibly creative just in itself. 
and it will have breakthroughs for you and potentially make you very wealthy, as I say, and breakthroughs for others. So in whatever form that you use it. So you're very interesting, as I said from the beginning, there is something really unique and very necessary about people like you and this form of creative genius. It takes us forward in our understanding of ourselves. And so in whatever form you, you manifest this, as I say, therapeutic, th theoretic, political, performative, whatever it might be, there's at the base of it a really clear understanding. And that is, that is your secret weapon part one that is your creative genius your exceptional mind so i do hope that this resonates for you and i hope that you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe and if you if you do resonate to it and you can see it in your life i'd love to hear about it in the comments below otherwise i hope to see you in future readings welcome to your reading pile two so these cards were some of the cards we've got some others for later in the reading that were under the empress card that brought you to this reading and they're meant to give me a bit of a sense about the nature and formation of your creative genius. And I use the word formation very deliberately <clears throat> because what I'm getting looking at these is almost a bit of a narrative about what has given birth to your creative genius and to the focus of it. Because it's interesting, these cards together, Heracles, Marilyn Monroe and Gypsy Soul, tell me that most of the people who've come to Pile 2 at your core you are very individual you like your freedom you like fun you saw life maybe initially as being an adventure you may have got into things that that took you off the path of your creativity or of your abundance or something like that because of this wish to be free not to be tied down in any way Heracles uh, is a character in Greek or Roman mythology who had to go through a number of trials about their strength and part of that was about breaking free from anything that held back the strength like addictions or or you know a wish for freedom that was maybe over over the top in the way that it actually was maybe working against you and I feel like for many of you you were in this sort of process of like being very very true to yourself and very confident and free. Probably as a child, you were very much the child who wanted to wander and, and get out in the world and so forth. Felt very strong. But something happened that made you think, oh, you know, luck is is what runs the world. And you know, I I you know I don't know how to how to, how to be free and then also achieve what I want. You know, I seem to be getting into patterns that aren't helping me. But you had a realization. And it's interesting we've got Buckminster Fuller here. Buckminster Fuller is a, a true Renaissance artist and inventor. Him, uh, probably more than anything, he was an inventor. And he was about looking at things differently and understanding things differently and doing a lot to try and help humanity around all of that, inventions and, and ideas to help humanity. And that fits with this realisation to be looking at a new way to earth and ground and to use the will because the will is very much associated with Heracles, the strength, the willpower to, to be able to balance this freedom loving and this enjoyment of life in a way that you then manifest the luck that you want. So the feeling that I have about this is that something happened in your life that made you think, oh, it isn't as simple as I thought it was. And this is not to say that you were simplistic. It's just that I think that you had a very free spirit and that is part of your creative genius and you're not meant to lose that. What you're meant to do and, and to be really, to be able to sharpen that creative genius is to then apply it in an inventive and new way, in a way that creates manifestation and that grounds that energy. So you feel like the natural inventor. You feel like someone who will find what isn't working in the world and what people have maybe almost given up on and you're able to, to find the solution. You're a problem solver. You're creative and strategic in that way. And it, this could manifest in any particular way. It doesn't mean those of you who come here and you're you know, singers or writers or artists, this absolutely can fit. It's just part of the narrative structure underneath it of, of applying your will and your realisation of the new and what will help you and help others to retain freedom and enjoyment, but also to have the will to bring things into being. With the earth energy here, many of you, if you are in the more traditional Creative areas may well be in things like sculpture, it could be installations, it could literally be inventions. Some of you may be extremely good at graphic uh, design for video games, for instance, or 
or technological invention and so forth with that kind of energy. Some of you will also be very much focused on environmental solutions and so forth. So you may be a leader in things to, to deal with environmental concerns and challenges that the world faces you know, at, at this point in time and going forward. But you realise that about yourself. You realise that, that you, know, you, you started off feeling freedom was everything. But in actual fact, you understand that freedom is to be able to express the will in a way that is grounded and earthed in some way. So I do think for many, there's something very real in what you will create. Your creative genius is meant to bring something new and real into the world in whatever, whatever form that is for you. So let's use the tarot and ask about where your creativity is now. And I'm going to use it in a couple of levels here. I'm firstly going to be looking at what the narrative structure tells me with the cards that I put down. And then I'm going to look at the balance of major and minor arcana and within the minor arcana the suits to get a little bit more information about how you express your creative genius and what sort of ways you're most likely to do that. So... Okay, so this definitely picks up that sort of sense something dramatic happened. Something that something happened in your, and it could be very recent, and it could have been something when you were quite young, I'm not sure, it could be either. Something dramatic happened, I think, that gave you an aha moment, that made you understand that you want to be a problem solver. Whatever your creativity is, it will solve problems. It could be as simple as solving the problem of a chord progression if you're a musician, to bring in sort of something new and interesting on that space that's also harmonic. Or it could be problem, you know, problem solving for environmental issues, as I say, for the world, anything like that. Whatever it is, you can recognize and see how it can give you a sense of mastery in the world and manifestation. You've, you've kind of cracked the code on one level around manifestation. You, you get it on a very fundamental level. And, and I do, again, feel like for many of you, your creativity is going to be quite material. But I'll get to that in a minute. Just talking about the narrative, it, it looks to me like that aha moment has made you also realise that you can make a business out of this, you can make it your career. If you are in a business environment, if that's where your creativity is, then there's something about your inventive approach that's going to give you a leadership role and solve a problem. With the Three of Swords reverse, there's some pain or some problem. You, you go to the core of the pain. You go to the core of where people have lost faith in some way and you find the way through that is enjoyable there is something very enjoyable about what you do your inventions if they're inventions they're very entertaining or charismatic in some way if you are a singer or a painter or something like that then there's something very joyous ultimately about what you do but it's the joy that is the freedom from the, the shackles of thinking you're hostage to luck or hostage to other things understanding that you can be a free spirit and create something that has sustainability. So I think you're at the point of realizing that. And I think that some of you may well have already started to do a business around that with the King of Pentacles or have some form of funding around it or be in a large organization and, and able to do it in some way there. And there is pleasure in, in having achieved that. But it's been hard won. As I say, there's something that's happened that made you really question your creativity or whether you were able to take it forward. Like, you know, like, has something, it could have been somebody doing you wrong, for instance, or it could have been a contract that didn't work out or something like that. But you have, you have started to really move out of that. The worst of that is over, if that's the case. And out of that, you've understood something that will help others as well. Now, in terms of major and minor arcana, etc., there's no major arcana cards. So that tells me that you, and you are not hostage to the fortunes of others. When, when, in the way that I'm looking at the cards from the, this perspective, when major arcana cards come up, that would be telling me that external forces of various sorts might be impacting things at the moment. So this tells me that you are your own person. And that very much fits with the overall narrative here. You are your Heracles. You've understood the mechanics, the, 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 the code of luck and manifestation, and your will is very strong. That's why you are probably the king of pentacles. This is not about gender. But you are probably the person who will manifest it. You're the, you, I think you will be likely to, if you are in an organisation with this, you're likely to either be a leader or to, to build your own business out of it. It, it looks very independent because you are independent and you, you have to have that. You're independent and you want to enjoy things. You want to bring joy to things. So those things don't feel that conventional. 
So firstly that I feel like you are your own person. At this point in time, your creativity is is not really being too much impacted by external forces. It might have been recently, and that might be what you've come out of, but if that's the case, you've come out of it. In terms of the balance of energies here, we do have all the suits. So there is a sort of renaissance energy there. There's a number of different ways that you could could manifest this. And, and certainly, as I say, Buckminster Fuller had a kind of inventor renaissance man type of sense about him. There is just slightly more swords than anything else. So I think this goes to the will. This goes to the to the, the, the focusing of the energy. It does suggest to me with the Ten of Swords and the Three of Swords there that there is precision to what you do. So if you are a artist, for instance, then you have very good perspective. Uh, if you are a, an inventor, then you will be in the details, you'll be in the mechanics of it, you'll really understand those sort of things. You would be extremely good at pattern recognition and those sorts of things. Definitely. But there's also something that I feel that is material about what you do with the King of Pentacles there. It's a strong card within this set. Uh, and, and I feel like it's saying that you create something that has a material form. It has a very strong design element underneath it, but it has a lot of form to it. And it's something that will bring some joy. It's something that and brings you joy to do it. I think the one thing or one energy that you need to be aware of is that Sometimes the kind of focus on the design takes you away from the creative flair that's with it as well. So it is balancing this freedom energy, this fiery freedom energy with the, the technique because the technique and the invention there is very important to you. Okay, let's use three more cards just to sort of see what your current sort of audience might be or, or you know, the energy from an audience in terms of your creative genius at this point in time. Okay, so something's coming. So it's interesting, we've got the major arcana cards here. So there is there is a shift happening. You've you've done a lot of internal work and you've got yourself in a position of strength. And that's allowing potential opportunities coming in with the chariot. There could be there could be opportunities and responses to what you do that seem to be quite rapid and a little bit hard to balance and choose around because with death reverse, you may not be 100% sure about whether you want to choose something. This is, I think, because you have come out of a period of time where there's been some battle around your creativity, around how people respond to it, whether they understand it or, and so forth. But that is shifting. You will not find, I think, no matter what your choice is around the creative opportunities that could be coming for you at this point in time and the audience that you have, they're going to get you more, I think, than, than whatever happened before. They're going to understand where you're coming from more. So you don't need to be coy about the decisions around it. You'll be pretty much on point. And I think it is about balancing. I think the chariot here is about balancing keeping your freedom within your creativity, but also what you need to do to manifest it, that realisation up there about what is the what is the sort of structure underneath this. So if it's a contract, it's what, what are the contract details and so forth. All right, let's look a little bit more into your potential audience. So a bit like I did in the star quality reading, I'm going to use a couple of personality sort of decks that give a bit of a information. It's mainly from a demographic, like who your natural audience would be for your creativity. Though sometimes it may pick up people that you know. So that's up to you as to whether or not you recognize people at the moment. But firstly, let's sort of see some of the, the personality demographics of your most likely audience for your creative genius. Okay, so firstly, I think that, that most of the people who've come to this reading are going to be in one form or another on the world stage because we've got a couple of different areas in the world shown here. Now, one of them may be where you come from, so it might be just sort of saying that sort of there's a national sort of interest in what you do, but if not, it suggests a broader, um, a broader framework and in actual fact, it suggests already that because we've got both Europe 
Europe countries and also South American. So if you were, for instance, someone who was bringing your inventions out on the world stage, they may be two natural areas to to first market your work because it appears that there's something about what you do that's very appealing to the cultures and to the to the requirements or the needs or whatever of people in European and South South American countries for for whatever reason. So and in, for some of you, because this is collective reading, it may be one or the other. You may go, I can, I can see I can see what I do working in South America, not so much in Europe or vice versa. But it, it overall it's telling me there's a bit of a world stage to this. Whatever you do could could travel outside of wherever you are nationally. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be on the stage like a Marilyn Monroe, but you could be. And if that's the case, you could have very strong fan bases in these areas. It, it equally could just be, as I say, a product that you develop, an invention you develop that has a natural first early adopter type of energy in those sorts of countries. You do attract those who are a bit rebellious and people who want to understand power, I think, with stripes here. There is some caution being said around some of the people that are drawn to you. So I suspect that's just saying, and I think you've probably already experienced this, that sometimes people will have different motives. Sometimes your following may have different motives. So just be aware of that. Be cautious about who you let into your inner circle. Because some may have hidden motives with camouflage over here. Most, however, I think it's more just about the fact that they protect themselves. It may be people who, who respond to what you're doing because it's, it's solving something for them where they feel that they need protection in some way. There could be something outdoorsy about what you do as well too. Your inventions might help with that. Or it could be, for instance, if you're a, a designer of video games, you may do ones that have that kind of aspect to them and you draw people for that. We've also got tiger. This could be people born in the year of the tiger. The tiger's general sort of personality, things are confident, brave, magnetic, thrill-seeking. So there's something there. There's something for some of you that is very outdoorsy and that fits with your gypsy soul. There will be people who really respond to that because they're like you. So they're very confident people. And I think they'll see your confidence because you've gone through some sort of a road and realized and become a manifester. And they're people who will recognize that. Might be saying be a bit careful of those together, though, if you think about it, because a tiger has stripes. So maybe the type that is around you that that is is almost competing with you. So be aware that some of your your followers or audience may also be competing with you. Let's use a different deck for a little bit more information around your your potential audience for your creative genius. Okay, so we've got 50s or older, so there's, there, you will appeal to a mature audience. doesn't mean that it's the only audience level that you have, but, but there is something that's well-formed about what you do. So I think that some of the people who follow you and who, who are your audience will see the journey that you've done, will see that you are manifesting something that's very material and something that makes sense, that in terms of design is, is very lasting and so forth. I'm also getting that it's once they're a fan, they're a fan forever that kind of thing because we also have faithful over here so once you have a follower for your creative creativity they're likely to stick with you they are confident you i think it's responding to your confidence so so that it's not saying that anybody confident be careful of but i think it is it is saying just be aware some of them could be competitors and then we've got cardamancy which is like divination like something like this so maybe some of the people who follow you maybe there's something spiritual in what you do or there's something which people sort of see a kind of a, an underpinning that is, that is about manifestation, that is about the laws of the universe and so forth. So people who believe in manifestation, the law of attraction, divination and all those sort of things may be amongst your followers. Okay, let's see if there's any key timing around your creative genius at the moment, Colto. <laughs> so this is saying again it's not going to tell us a particular timing it says time will tell there are things still forming i would say and that's because i think you're just coming into that stage where the external world's starting to see you and respond to what you've done because of all the work you've done 
you're impatient, you <laughs> say so make it happen sooner. And because you are a manifester, because your will is so strong, you probably can bring it on sooner. I think the only thing to be aware of there is that you do want to make sure that once the opportunities are there, that you feel comfortable to have enough information to make the decision that you want to make and to feel in control of that chariot energy. But if you want it to happen sooner, you can you can will it into being. Okay. So let's have a look at the other cards that were under the Empress card that brought you to this reading. So firstly, the Visionary Oracle, which is a creative oracle for the creative energy around you right now. It's a little bit hard to read this, but the wording on this and what this, this particular sort of artistry is meant to show is relentlessness. So yeah, you are, you are Heracles, you are strong, you are relentless, you do want it to happen sooner just go with it. I think the thing, there may be a little bit of a warning there though, because if you originally, whatever this was that, that you kind of had the aha moment and started to work out the, the mechanics of the universe, which is what your creative genius has done, was because you wanted to be sort of free and move quickly and you ran up against obstacles. It might be saying, remember that, remember that stuff as well too. Don't be so relentless that you, that you trip up again because you really have worked it out, but you need to make sure that the precision is there with what you do. Okay, let's look at some other energies around you. Wow, okay, so the sky's the limit for you. That's it, very much that Buckminster Fuller thing. You are very future focused, so is he. There's something in what you're doing that will actually have an impact on, at the very least, your future and your business future with the King of Pentacles. But I think for many of you, the inventions and the things that you're looking at will have a, a focus to the future. It's again picking up that energy that some of you may do something in the creative realm, express issues or design things to help around emerging environmental issues for instance you're very future oriented you're very you you are ahead of the pack definitely it's one of the reasons why you can manifest there's journey and travel here journey path and travel so i think the path thing is picking up that you know what your path is now but i do think and that might be also why we saw the different different places in the world that there's something about your creativity that is going to see you traveling a lot in the world and taking your message to a lot of spaces in the world so let's finish up with a card from the Creative Soul Mandala Oracle, which is a piece of advice, the last piece of advice from Spirit about what to focus on right now around your creative genius. And we've got anchors. Okay, so this is the balance. This is the balance right from the beginning. Your wish to travel, your free soul, all of that kind of thing, that relentless energy, but your realization also that things need to be earthed, that you need to know that things have been designed in a way that they're going to have that sort of sense of being able to, to have longevity and so forth. And that will bring the audience to you that is very faithful. So always think about how you balance that freedom and that inventiveness and that incredibly future-oriented mind with the anchors to the current world that allows you to do it as, say, a, a business or something that will you know, have material benefit for you. It's that balance. And you understanding that balance in yourself is part of your creative genius. And that will help in the balance and the precision of whatever you create. So I hope that that was helpful. And I hope that it resonated for you and you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And let me know in the comments if it resonates for you. I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. So these cards were under the Empress that brought you to this particular reading. There's a few others that were as well too that we'll get to later in the reading. This is meant to be a bit of a snapshot of some of your creative genius, the energy that is forming it and which drives it. And for a start, I think many of the people who've come to this reading, whether you're doing this as your career at the moment or not, are very drawn to poetry, music, art, creativity, writing, and all the things that are about expressing the beauty of nature and life and humanity and love with Dionysus there. So, and a sense of freedom around doing that, wanting to, to really revel in and show and create around those sorts of energies. And with the circus of love, particularly around the heart, you are someone who comes from the heart. You are someone who your creative genius arises from your sense of love for others, love of life love of everything that is beautiful and artistic and creative, but also love of love and an understanding of both its 
its beauties and also its pains and how to balance the connection of attraction between people and peace in that attraction. Because it's interesting in terms of the potential comparisons here, we have Greta Garbo and Frida Kahlo. So Frida Kahlo as a painter was very much somebody who processed her own pain and her own issues and her own loves through her work. And it's very iconic in that space. It's about using art in some way to express the truth of the heart and the truth of life and the truth of dealing with pain in some way to get to a position of peace and very spiritual connection your your heart is very spiritually connected and very likely to be you're very likely to be psychic to be very highly empathic with others but you also understand your own energies there your own understanding of that and sometimes it's a bit overwhelming for you i think and, and so some of your expression, your creative expression, is a way to express that while also being able to hide your own heart to some degree. We have the trickster over here. I don't think that you are a trickster. I don't think... I mean, it's possible that somebody could have come here creatively who's like, you know, likes to do magic tricks or something like that. But I think with Greta Garbo, who was iconic for both her, her acting and her performance and, and her beauty, but also for her wish to have privacy and wish to be alone, wish to be within herself, connected to this sort of love energy. It's like you may wear masks sometimes around that, or you may, there may be something in what you do creatively that is so expressive of the human condition and love and, and touch people to that degree that you get a lot of projection directed towards you and a lot of people who want to be like you and so forth or want to know more about you or want to be really close to you. So I think you will have within your creative genius an, a, a drive to be able to protect that is most what is most precious to you on a personal level, but somehow be able to create things in the world that have that kind of connection to others and that come from that, but still allow you to have space for yourself. So probably of all the readings, this is the one that feels the most likely to be drawing people who are in the sort of music, writing, painting, those sorts of areas doesn't mean it is the only way you would express this. You could express it in other creative ways, but this is it's got to be true to your heart. And it's got to be true to an understanding of love and how to bring peace and rather than pain or process pain that is is about the almost like I'm getting that it's the the tension between the side of us all as human beings that need our own space and our individuality with the side of us that wants to connect to others. So even if it isn't that you're doing creative work in the traditional way around all of that there's something in what you create that looks at that tension and understands that tension and brings some peace to it so really interesting let's use tarot to look at where you're at at the moment with your creative genius and i'm going to be looking at this two levels i'm going to be looking firstly at the narrative of the cards that i put down but i'm also going to be looking at the balance of major minor arcana and within the minor arcana the suits you'll see how that works as i as i talk it through Oops. Okay, so firstly, you are you are very spiritually aligned. You're very spiritually uh, connected. You may very well do spiritual work. You may your creativity may come through something spiritual or magical. Some of you may literally, as I say, it might be that a few people who've come here. Some of your creativity is in things like um, you're a mentalist or you're you're a magician or something like literally. That's possible. But if that's the case, there's still something very beautiful and poetic about what you do and. And it is a way to process energies around connection with others in some way. But I think for most of you, that's, that's quite specific. But those two together does make me feel I need to say that's a possibility for people who've come here. But I think for most, this is really very much saying that there is a spiritual underpinning to all of this, a spiritual drive to that sense of love. You're very heart-centered, very heart-chakra-centered and so forth, but it's a spiritual connection. 
And it looks to me as though you're really starting to awaken to what this could be creatively. But maybe for some of you, you need to either leave a workplace you're in or find some sense of liberation and how to be a bit more unusual or different in the workplace that you're in. So it's either that you need to leave because you need to actually have a creative career potentially. And you know, whenever I, I was very careful about saying leaving workplaces, is you always have to make sure that you've Made your finances are okay and all of those sort of things. Don't don't just sort of rush out from something just because you've had a tarot reading. So it could be that that if you are in a much more conventional sort of environment at the moment and you need to be somewhere more unconventional that picks up this really strong creative artistic side of you, then you need to start thinking about how to free yourself and, and what else might be out there. And then see what happens because you once you've started to really think about it and see it and not see yourself as trapped, see yourself as being able to do it, then the magician manifesting ability should bring in opportunities for you, definitely. For some of you, you are meant to be your own boss and that's all there is to it. And that's part of why the, the Hierophant reverse is there as well too, because of something about what you're bringing, particularly spiritually. I don't think you would be coming from traditional spiritual sort of areas you know i think this is sort of something a little bit more either individual to you or a little bit more sort of alternative in terms of spirituality you may have actually had to break free from what you felt was more restrictive spiritual uh, processes or or approaches to to have your own sovereignty so that's a possibility but you've certainly done that work i think the only thing is that there's still something that you feel a bit trapped with so that's whether that, as I say, is a job or whether it's it's just really starting to own who you're becoming, you know, or, or even some of the pain, like you, you would process pain mentally before anything else. I think that's how you protect your heart, actually. It's how you sort of keep yourself protected. It's a theoretical approach to it. Now, getting to the other side of it, we have three major arcana cards here. This suggests to me that there's some big external forces around you at the moment or are coming in um, for you. So, so this is a pivotal time potentially around some of your creative genius, your creative pro product. There is definitely the possibility of manifesting it in some sort of business or in some sort of contract. As I say, not necessarily the most conventional one. If it is a contract, be very, very aware of the contract details with the Eight of Swords there. Don't give away the farm. Don't and it can be tricky, I know, particularly on creativity, that often the first time that you, for instance, get a book published, more needs to be edited. You need to be more open to that than possibly you want to creatively. Later on, if you become really successful, then you have more freedoms and so forth. So there are, there are always compromises, and that's not to say that that is a reasonable thing to do. But it certainly is saying you know, if you are looking at contractual arrangements or you know, job or career arrangements, make sure you get some really good legal advice around it because you don't want to, to get trapped by feeling, well, the external is the only one that can can pu push me forward because you do have a lot of creative energy and they're responding to that. It's not you actually have a really good product, whether that product is you or something you're creating. So don't underestimate that and get really good advice. The other thing is that we we don't have, because we've got so many major arcana, we've only got two suits here. It tells me that the nature of your creativity is is probably in, in areas that are with fire, like very dramatic. So if you are a writer, you might do screenplays, you might do theatre productions, you might you know, do poetry recitals, but on really sort of dramatic sort of areas. Or it could be around the, the sort of like painting and that sort of expression with, with one's energy there. Uh, it's also something that has to be very, it has to have a lot of passion to it for you to sort of feel able to really bring your creative genius out. And then in whatever form it forms, it's very precise. With swords energy, there is, and in fact, there's interesting, there's a tension there. Because it's the eight of swords, your, your technical skill, you're very, very good at your technical skill of whatever your creative approach is. And whether, whether that is in the traditional creative things or whether it's in, say, IT and, and you know, technological sort of stuff, which it could be, or even scientific sort of creating you know, a vaccine in a lab or something like that, you're technically excellent and you will always have really, really good technique. But it is a possibility with the Eight of Swords there and then with the page that you're going to have to balance that technique with what you really want to express and it might be also why i had that sense of like you know somebody who's written a book and who's got a contract now for it to be published but you're seeing you know you've, you've been very precise about 
about you know what you wanted to say but now the technique is being sort of like dealt with you know by an editor there, there might be always a tension around that sort of thing and there's nothing wrong with that but it's just it, you will be you will part of whatever your creative expression is is sort of like a bit of a battle internally between technical excellence and creative fire and that's part of the sort of balance that you need to find it's part of the and it's the attraction of those two elements to each other that you need to sort of have come to peace with and so forth it may be that there are certain things that you do from your heart from your passion that remain private that have a very smaller audience because you don't want to allow the the editors or the the, the technical side of things to to inhibit that and that's fine if that's the case so let's have a look a little bit more about what's happening externally in your audience with tarot given that there is a very strong external energy around you at the moment okay so you are worried at the moment by the looks of things or if something's coming in soon you'll be a little bit worried about what do you give away to to get whatever this opportunity is there's a choice that is attractive to you and there are people potentially who who share your vision and that can take that forward but sometimes there's a little bit of a tension between the two and the five here you know because the five is is people around you but it is people that could potentially be arguing with you maybe about technique maybe about the medium that you use maybe about the strategy around it so that's why i think it is very important to work out what kind of sovereignty you will have around this so that you can make the choices that you want to make and so that you can work with others but in a way that doesn't become a little bit more combative so there's something around that but i do feel as though what this is telling me because there's no major arcana there is that you are more in control of that than you possibly think you are if there were more major arcana here i would be thinking you really are on a balance where there's opportunities where it's imbalanced at the moment that that the other party has more power more resources and more say and you're just going to have to compromise i think here it shows that that you can as long as you don't tie yourself up in knots around it you can make choices that are a little bit closer to what you want to do and you can deal with this five of wands conflict is never major conflict it's not really a big problem it just feels like maybe a conflict with people who like a more traditional way of doing things and you want to do something that's a little bit more unique because it's a conflict around traditional versus non-traditional and and it's, it's a little bit worrying but it, i think you will be able to make the choices that you need to make so let's get a bit of a sense about who your natural audience is for your creative genius and so we're going to be looking at some personality characteristics this is largely around demographics so it's sort of like the type of fan base you might have the type of following you might have but you might recognize certain characteristics as people that you know at the moment who are supporting you but for the most part we're really getting more of a sense of your natural audience okay so this is interesting firstly we've got violet we've got crown royalty you may get a following amongst people in the aristocracy they may love what you talk about in terms of love beauty poetry or whatever you might literally be someone who who does a performance at a royal gala for instance that's possible with that otherwise i think there is a sense of the sovereign they people will respond to the the sort of like emotional sovereignty that you have and the spiritual sovereignty you have with violet connecting to the the crown chakra and the third eye chakra certainly people are drawn to you because of the compassionate and sensitive love-based stuff that you do and the beauty of it there's a softness to it and so there's a softness to the people who want to to follow you know they they are also people that are in love with love and they like balance they're likely to be very attentive they'll really want to see what you bring out with next and there's a lot of charm around these people so if you were to be interacting with them they're likely to be charming and balanced which is nice it tells me that your followers are, are going to be much more on point with who you are and what you're trying to express there may be some of the people that you have to deal with seeing these tarot cards that are more like the industry gatekeepers or whatever but you will have this very loyal balanced attentive following with two chinese astrology 
things. Firstly, the horse, the sort of personality characteristics for the horse, uh, people who are sort of amusing and enthusiastic, they, they like to be entertained. They're very independent, so they'll, they'll actually respect your boundaries, which is nice. They're persuasive. They can be a bit moody on occasion. So I think some of this love sort of stuff, the, the more moody or atmospheric side of whatever you do in relation to your creativity will appeal to them. The rooster is adventurous and funny and loyal. So again, loyal, the sort of sense that I think people will stay with you. Uh, they're, they're amusing as well. There could be humor in what you do. This might be part of the trickster. It may be that for some of you, you talk about love, you create things around love, but there's a kind of almost a quirky, satirical side of it that is still still has a lot of heart. So, so you know, like comedians who who can really uncover things about the human heart and the human condition through humor. It's not vicious humor though. You are not you're not vicious. It's not dark satire. This will be this will be sort of more playful, and I think you will attract people with that kind of energy as well. So let's have a look with another pack about what other characteristics of your audience are natural for your creative genius, Pile 3. Okay, so you may start off with your first following being around your family and friends. And I think for many of you, you've gone beyond that now because of the sort of major arcana cards turning up there. But it may have been your first real fans and, and real admirers were around your family and friends. And don't underestimate that. I know that people sort of say, oh, well, you know, if your family and friends like what you do, who knows whether it's real. You do have a lot of creative skill, a lot of precision in what you do, and, and it comes from the heart and so forth. You definitely got the creative goods and that's also why the major arcana are turning up that's why there are real opportunities coming for you some of the people who follow you might be a bit narcissistic there might be a lot of projection this is why i said right at the beginning i had the feeling that some of you may need to deal with with people who respond to your work thinking it's all about them and in fact it's a much broader thing so you may draw the sort of people who go oh yes that's me that's me that's me and so, and some of that may pick up some of the tension around you too. It may be that some of the people who are followers are people who are also working with you on this sort of stuff. They're sort of like your fans and your supporters, but it's all kind of about them as well too, because there's something so intrinsic about love and the human condition about what you do that the people would be drawn to that. People, that type of person would want to see themselves in that. Some of them may be with the spiritual side of things into divination in some form or other. You might create something. You might create an oracle that is all about the human condition and the human heart and so forth that's used in spiritual practices. So you may get a following on that sort of level. Or you just may draw spiritual people to you who can see the spiritual underpinnings of what you're actually creating. And likely to be fairly youthful with the 20s there. I also think it suggests you get people, if you get them fairly young, they're likely to stick with you throughout your career because there's something about what you do that helps people understand themselves at that age. The 20s is all about learning who you are. And I think people who are very eloquent in one form or another creatively around love and the human condition and all that sort of thing do draw people in. I do get the feeling that some of you will be in music and will be you know, great lyricists, great rap artists, that kind of thing. That's partly that youthful energy as well too. The poetry and the balance that you bring to things and the unconventional side of things seems to be connecting here for some of you. Okay, let's ask about timing. If, if Spirit thinks there's any specific timing around your creative genius at the moment. Okay. Doesn't surprise me, you know, this is the first one of the readings that has actually some specific timing. And the fact that it's the first one that really had major arcana in that first row. I do think things are coming into focus. If you haven't already had these offers, I'd say something's coming in in nine to ten months. Or it could be that off the back of an offer that you take up, there is a step forward in what you do in nine to ten months. So it's saying time to plan. It's saying there are key things around your creativity that are imminent so start planning start planning if it hasn't come in yet plan as though it's coming in because it is so it's just a matter of being ready and making sure that you can take the best advantage of the energy that's coming in in nine to ten months okay let's look at the last 
cards that were under the Empress card for this reading. So firstly from the Visionary Oracle, it's a card around the current creative energies that you're experiencing. And it can be a little bit hard to read what this says. So this says connect to your urge. So really connect to that which is passionate in you, that, that wakes up that firebird. You know, connect to what was really, really, really driving you because that's going to bring in even more precision and beauty to what you do. And it's also going to help you plan and get ready for the energy that's coming in. So your own drive is bringing it in and, and don't ever underestimate that. So some other energetic things. Okay, so it says watch and listen carefully. So I think that's picking up some of that swords energy. I think it's saying that as, as you bring this energy in and things start to come into play, make sure that you're very clear on the details around things because you, there's something about the opportunities coming up for you that will start to set a pattern. It's not one that you can't break out of later. As I say, sometimes you have to make compromises earlier in your creative career if that's what you're doing or in whatever form this is. But... Watch and listen carefully. Just make sure that you're clear on what you're doing and that you're comfortable with what you're doing because you're coming into a time of growth with moss here. There's breeding and reproduction as well. For some of you, it could be picking up creativity as well, coming from love, being you know a family, for instance. But I think for most, this is much more around creativity, around love and so forth. But there's something about what you're doing that has a great growth potential. And interesting when it has time to plan and connect to your urge, it's also saying relax and sleep and surrender. Things are coming at the time they're meant to come. You are going to be successful, but you are going to part of this planning. You need to be ready for it. You need to, to make sure that you're feeling physically strong for it and you're getting plenty of sleep and that you relax when you need to relax because you're coming into a very big growth period. So to finish off pile three, let's get the last card that was under the Empress card. And this is from the Creative Soul Mandala Oracle. So it's just meant to be a last piece of advice from Spirit about maximizing your creative genius. We've got transformation. So yeah, there is something transformative coming in for you. You are taking this to another level. You are going to get a whole heap more opportunities and that's going to really transform who you are and transform even what you're doing. It is why you need to be able to have some boundaries around it and some sleep and so forth. This is a very major creative period that you're coming into, but you can be at peace with it if you just get that balance between your creativity and your precision right and, and draw in the right sort of energies around you. Make sure that you always have the final say around things in in a way that you're comfortable with and see it as part of a journey because you are i think you're going to go very far with this but you're just starting to really blossom you're just starting to have this growth cycle and and everything's sort of just on the precipice at this point ready to sort of jump into the great unknown and transform into what you're meant to be so i hope that this resonates for you and i hope you enjoyed the reading if so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you do recognize this and you can see what it is in your life, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.